music sure is a blessing. You can be dismissed. Go to your class if you like. If you have a Bible, turn to Proverbs, book of Proverbs, chapter 31, Proverbs 31. In Sunday school last week, uh, we got a little sidetracked, but um, in Proverbs 31, we dealt with in her mouth is the law of kindness. This is about the virtuous woman. And today I thought I would speak not on the virtuous woman, but the virtuous mother. And uh, there's a lot in Proverbs 31, just wonderful, wonderful tr truths. But we will begin in verse 10. And uh, if you're there, follow along with me. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. What a blessing. And we'll drop all the way down to verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. In that short uh, list of verses, uh, she shall be praised is mentioned three times. And uh, we certainly thank God for godly mothers. Amen. And uh, let's ask the Lord to bless his word today. Father, thank you for the truth of the scripture. Thank you how this, these important truths are lived out by lives that are in this assembly right now. And I pray, God, that you would bless our mothers and bless our children. And may you be glorified in all that's done today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the virtuous mother. Um, I know that there are many circumstances and many situations, and I want to be, I want to be able to minister to everybody today. Uh, not every Mother's Day is a happy occasion for every mother, and uh, sometimes there are some burdens, and I do want to address that because there's a response that God gives for that and how He can minister to us. I won't spend the entire ser sermon on that, but I think it's important to touch that. So I want to briefly mention this. In Proverbs 10.1, the Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Um, and so again, that is, that is a reality in many lives. Proverbs 17.25, A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. One more verse. Proverbs 15.20, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. When we come to Proverbs 31, it's a wonderful chapter because there's interaction. This woman is godly and she's blessing a blessing to her family, to her children and to her husband, and they in turn praise her. That's a happy home, amen? Everybody's happy, happy, happy all the time, 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 right? And it's just a good situation. And so that's with the children not being what they need to be to the parent, but it works the other way also. Second Chronicles 22.3 this is about a wicked queen by the name of Athaliah and her son Ahaziah. It says that he also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. What a terrible thing when a parent would guide a child in the wrong way, down the wrong road. Uh, you had that with Jacob and his mother and um, how she got him to deceive the father and all of those stories in the Bible. But this is how it's supposed to work, amen? Back to happy, happy, happy all the time, time, time. Um, in Titus chapter two, the aged women who've been down the road and they know the Lord and they've seen uh, the Bible principles tried and proved over and over, it says there in verse four that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children. What a blessing when that takes place. MacArthur wrote this, the mother more than the father is the one who molds and shapes those little lives from day one. There's a promise in the Bible in Ephesians, more than in Ephesians, but in chapter six and verse two, honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So these are, these are wonderful truths. Um, mothers love their children, children love their mothers. Proverbs 31, uh, 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. 
her husband also, and he praiseth her. So what a blessing it is when that godly mother is such an influence in that home. Uh, we read this verse also, verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. In 1 Peter 3, it says, it's all about the hidden man of the heart, not the outward beauty. It says the meek and quiet spirit is such a blessing. And I heard somebody say one time, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Makeup's fine. Amen. Makes, makes you look pretty. But uh, guys don't wear makeup. We, we don't want to look pretty. Amen. We want the women to look pretty. And somebody said one time, if the old barn needs painting once in a while, you got to paint it, right? And I would never say anything like that because we'll just move right along. Man, that was a bad thing to say on, on Mother's Day. There's a lot of examples in the Bible. And really, I'm just going to give you these chapters and say something briefly. But it would be wise to read these and to see the truths found in these stories because they're in the Bible. They're written for our learning and for our admonition. And so you go back to that story and you glean what God would have you get from that. Uh, the, a mother's love is over and over. There's so many examples. Genesis 21. Hagar's love for her child. That's a great story. Exodus 2, the mother of Moses. Wonderful story of the miracles of God. 1 Samuel chapter 2, the mother of Samuel. She said, for this child I have prayed. And then she lent that child back to the Lord. You see that great love, not only for her child, but for the Lord and his work. You have 2 Samuel chapter 2, Rizpah's love for her sons. 1 Kings chapter 3, the mother of Solomon's time. You're familiar with that story. 2 Kings 4, the Shunammite's mother. That's where we get the song, It Is Well With My Soul. And uh, all, of these, all of these stories, that's just six or seven stories, but they're wonderful stories about a mother's love and how God blessed that. Amen? And uh, such a, it's a wonderful thing to be, to be a mother. There's countless books written about this. There's countless movies. Uh, you ever watch a movie, and here's, a, I, I better not give the whole thing away, but here's a story about a mother maybe in a wayward son, and the son comes back and how happy she is, or maybe she was wayward and the children were praying for her, and at the end of the movie, Hallmark movies, at the end of the movie, they, everything works out. Everybody's happy, right? You see who the bad guy is, and this is the good guy. But, I mean, there's, there's tears sometimes watching those movies, and those stories... A lot of those stories in the Bible can produce that too, where you just see the goodness of God in his work. Mothers are praised for their love, for their care and sacrifice, not only for their children, but for their husbands, for the husband will praise her also. Um, to Kirst wrote, motherhood is a million little moments that God weaves together with grace, redemption, laughter, tears, and most of all love. A million little moments. You see those all the time. Spurgeon wrote, Never could it be possible for any man to estimate what he owes to a godly mother. And so today, we want to praise uh, and cherish the mothers that have lived for the Lord. Um, my mother passed away. She was 51 years old. She had only been saved for a short period of time. I miss her. I wish she was around. I'd crawl up in her lap and break her leg. But... Uh, I would still try to do that. It was a, a very tender spot. Um, in Isaiah 49, 15, this is what God says. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. God will never forget nor forsake us. You have Psalm 27, 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. He is always there, always. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 16. And there are numerous stories like this throughout the scriptures that show us no matter how somebody human fails us or does not meet our expectations, God is always there. He will never fail us. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So the expectation of him, there is no limit to that. And he is always there for us. Maybe we're not getting the, the care or the tenderness from a person that should be giving us that 
care or tenderness, but God is always there. In Ezekiel chapter 16, this is a picture of God calling Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and establishing that nation and that seed where the Christ would come from. And it talks about a picture of a child being cast out. And this is what God does for that. Let's begin reading in verse 3. Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou wast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou wast cast out into the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. And when I passed by thee, God is speaking, and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. A little later on, he says, thou becamest mine. God is always there no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance. He's always there for us, and his message to us is live. It's eternal life, obviously, but it's abundant life, and it's something that is so precious to all of us. Um, there are different uh, people that affect our life, um, brothers, friends, fathers, and God takes on all of those roles, and we'll see that. The Lord is a friend of sinners. He sticks closer than a brother, our Father who art in heaven. We have all of these examples in the scripture. But then I want to speak today about the mother, the comfort of the mother. God singles that out. He picks it out of the scriptures. I think that's one of the greatest things about a mother. She comforts. Amen? And as we think back, we'll see that in a moment. As you think back how your mother comforted you in so many ways. In Isaiah 66, 13, as one whom his mother comforteth, and then God says, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted. As a mother comforts, so will I. That's a lot to say for God, amen? So that godly mother is meeting this wonderful, wonderful need. Um, let's look, look at some roles that a mother plays. The mother of a little baby. You ever see the mother of a newborn baby? It's the prettiest baby in the world, even though it might not be. Amen? But, uh, I mean, they just love that little baby. And Victor wrote this. A mother's arms are made of tenderness, and children sleep soundly in them. How opposite the man. He's throwing the baby. I mean, it's two weeks old, just came home, you know, throwing it up and catching it. And the mother, anyway. Maybe you have never done that, but uh, that's kind of scary. But the mother of a little baby, it's so tender. Uh, you ever see any of that where the mother is cooing with the baby and, you know, talking baby talk? You know, you ever talk baby talk with the little baby? I mean, a mother will do that. Well, how about uh, the terrible twos? They call it the terrible twos. It's really not the terrible twos. Here's the definition of that. The terrible twos refers to a normal stage, normal stage in a child's development in which a toddler can regularly bounce between reliance on adults and a new desire for independence. When that new desire for independence kicks in, it's a whole different ball game. Amen? <laughs> Come back here. I mean, you got to put little safety latches on the cupboards. Boy, I wonder what this bobby pin would do if I stuck it in the electric saga, you know? So now they're exploring, and they're not so dependent on the parent. So it's really not terrible twos. It's a normal adjustment in life, amen? And then I'm going to bring you all the way up to teenagers. Ah, bless the Lord for teenagers, right? Because by the time a child gets to be a teenager, everything's normal. Everything's fine. There's no strife. There, it's just everything's good, amen? Well, amen. Uh, don't turn the message off yet. But uh, we all know what, what teenagers go through. And uh, how about the mother of a child who's getting ready to leave the nest? I was down to see my brother recently, and they have 
uh, young boy, and his name is Paul Delmar. I don't know if the world can handle two of us, but uh, they named him after me. And uh, he's 18. He's got a girlfriend. It's pretty serious. Uh, you know, he's out of school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he's getting ready to leave. You know, now that's, that's normal. Now, if he's 45, that's not so normal, you know, but if he's, if he's 18. But what does that mother think about? Because, and I know what my, my brother thinks about it. He loves his son, but it's going to leave a hole, amen? Because there's a connection there, and that's a wonderful thing. The mother of a son, a grandson, a great-grandson or great-granddaughter, um, that mother always wants to be there. Grandmas have those little paddles, you know, and they're all padded, you know, and they call it grandma's paddle because we don't touch those kids, man. We're just, you let them come to your house, you give them all the candy they want, you let them do whatever, and then you send them home. Amen? And you are, you are the most important thing in their life. Anyway, I'm being funny, but I thought I was being funny. Um, what a blessing. What a blessing for a mother who is a godly mother and knows what Proverbs 31 is all about. It brings praise from God. It brings praise from the family. It's just such a wonderful, wonderful thing. Today, I don't know if you got a gift for your mother, and maybe your mother has passed on, and maybe your children have given a gift to you. Whatever it is, there's an expression of love, an expression of gratitude. Maybe it's a card, a call, a text, breakfast in bed, Amen? Uh, no, that one didn't go over too good. I'm taking somebody out for dinner, that's a good one. Just an expression of praise. Or you can do what I did. I bought Linda a new cordless drill. <laughs> and that'll help her around the house as she's fixing things. Amen? Um, some children, some children don't understand how important a mother's role is. And I think as they get older, and certainly as they get out of the home, married, have their own children, then they see the, all the sacrifices of the mother. Amen? Which there are many. Some husbands don't understand. They don't understand. There's a, a mother's love. What do, they, what do they call it? A mother's love, a maternal bond. That's what they call it. And it's a connection that a mother has with a child that will never be broken. And that's why when we started out the message, there's a heartache, there is grief when that child, for some reason, despiseth mother, despiseth father, and the connection is gone. That always stays with that mother. And we always pray that God would heal that in, in anybody's life that's going through that. I heard somebody say one time about a mother, and you need to think about this. It's no big deal having a baby, you know, no big deal. You just go in the hospital, have the baby, come out and eat ice cream, you know. It's, it's not that big of a deal, but it is that big of a deal, I think. In Psalm 139, 13, thou hast possessed my range, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb, and this is where the child came from. The Bible talks about the nine months and the travail that it that takes to bring forth a child. Travail means to labor with pain. They call it labor, amen? Because it's not an easy task to toil, to suffer the pangs of childbirth, and it produces a relationship that nothing else can produce. It's quite, quite a connection. You see that, right? What a blessing. What a blessing to experience that. Um, Isaiah 66, 13 again. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. I think the main blessing of a mother is she does comfort. Um, we have those, those uh, fluffy blankets. We call them comforters, you know. The Holy Spirit in the Bible is called a comforter. And there's a deep meaning to that. It produces a rest, a trust, a peace if you will. And it's always the same. It's just such a wonderful thing. Um, the reason there a, a godly mother is able to 
do not just comfort a child physically, materially, but spiritually, is because God gives that comfort to that mother. And that's what Proverbs 31 is all about. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1, 3, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. There's no comfort like God's comfort. And when a woman has that, she has that extra dimension she can give to that child, which is far superior to anything else. Amen. I wrote a couple things down today, and I want you to think about these, and you probably already have been, but you probably have many fond memories of how your mother comforted you. I, I remember one in particular, I was just a little kid and I had an earache and my mom put me up in her lap and it was on a rock, she was on a rocking chair and my earache was gone. I don't know how it happened, but uh, it was, that's all I remember about it. I was young, I was probably only about 21 when that happened, but uh, there's nothing, there's nothing like a mother's comfort. Did you like that, Karen? But um, think, about, think about all the times. Like the one lady said, there's a million small moments like that. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when we're thinking about what's good and pleasant and lovely and of good report, all of those things, it transforms our heart. We're transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so what we think about it's so important because the devil will get us sometimes to think about one thing, one negative, and we leave all of this wonderful love and care. Everybody has a bad day, right? Nobody's perfect. Amen? And not everybody does everything right. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we cast down imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So he says... Think on these things. Think on these things. And that makes a wonderful Mother's Day. Amen? Maybe a favorite meal. Maybe how she took you somewhere. What, the list is endless. There's a million things you can think about that will give you such joy and gratitude. I wish my mom was still here. I wish she was here. I would be so grateful for that. But think about that. And then today, of all days, tell her. Tell her what some of those... You know, Mom, I was just thinking about this. This was so precious. And, and go over that. Our little uh, granddaughter, when she was a little girl, she was sitting at our, our kitchen table, and my wife would make cookies with her and all of that. And so I'm there, my wife is there, and our granddaughter is there. And she looks at my wife and she says, Mimi, you're sweet. And then she looked at me, those big eyes that you could never say no to. You know, you know the feeling right now? And she says, Papa, you're silly. <laughs> it took me from here all the way down here. But I mean, when, when, when we sit around now, obviously she's 26 or 46, I don't know how old she is. But, but we, we, we remember different things that we've done together. And it's always a precious time. And may, if you're a mother here today, may you remember all those things too and share those with your daughter. I think that's a wonderful thing, or your son. It's a wonderful thing to do, especially today. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10, if that cannot happen for you. We've quoted a number of scriptures, but God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name in that ye have ministered and do minister. And you're praying, you're trying to do everything you can do to be a good mom. God knows that. And he will reward you certainly for that. There's a song in our hymn books, and uh, we're not going to sing it. I don't know the tune at all. But it's, it's on page 713, and you don't have to turn there. I just want to read this. Like as a mother comforteth, O words of gentle worth, so will I comfort you, declares the Lord of all the earth. 
He bends in faithful watchfulness. He slumbers no, not nor sleeps. Above his trusting child, the Lord a constant vigil keeps. He patient is, as mothers are, who love their children well. Our faults and failings he forgives, his mercies, who can tell? Like as a mother, grant, O oh God, this likeness e'er may be, a holy symbol to declare the love that dwells in thee. That's the Lord. And God does that for us. Amen.